I'm going to cover functions in this video, which are really defined in two ways in LSL. A traditional function sits outside of the main code base and can be called or referred to at any time from the code. Traditional functions are usually placed at the top of the code in LSL. LSL also has a predefined set of functions. These are single line functions you can use to get information, call an event, or take action anywhere in the code. LSL functions are defined by the double L's in front of them and the parentheses that follow the name of the function. Many require parameters inside the parentheses as well. The LLSA function in the default script is an example of an LSL function. It requires two parameters. The first parameter is an integer or a channel, which in this case is zero. The second parameter is a string. In the state entry event, it says hello world. For the touch event, it says touched. The channel zero in this case happens to be the local chat channel. The LLSA function will say whatever you want on whatever channel you define. LSL has hundreds of functions covering a wide range of categories. I'll show you some specific examples shortly and we'll get into more details in later videos too. For now, it's just important to understand their structure and how they vary from traditional functions. LSL functions can be nested inside traditional functions. In fact, LSL functions are often nested inside of other LSL functions. Let's make some changes to the default script so I can show you some examples. This is the default script. I had two additional say functions in the state entry event, and I copied everything from the state entry event into the touch event. So now when the script starts, you'll get all three of these statements. When you touch the script, you'll get a touch statement followed by the same three statements. You can see it's a little repetitious, so we're going to clean it up with a function called let's do this. We added at the top here. Now in the state entry event, we just call the function. And in the touch event, we still say touched, but then call the function to say the other three statements. This is a good example of how to use a function to reduce the amount of code you're writing. Take a look at this script example. Pause the video if you want to copy it. First thing to notice is that there's no state entry event because you really don't need one. I do have a touch start event and at the top I have an integer named switch. Now because I haven't defined a value for switch as an integer, it's going to start off with a value of zero. Now let's go to the touch start event inside the default state. We're using a comparative here against the value of switch. And based on the value of switch, we're going to change the color of the box. So our if conditional checks to see if the value of switch equals zero. Note the double equal signs. This is the syntax required for else and else if statements. Because switch is zero when the script starts, these actions are going to be performed when we first touch the box. We have an LSL set color function. It's going to set the color red on all sides of the queue. And then we're going to set the switch value to one. This time, the next time we touch the cube, we can have something else happen. And the next time we touch the cube, the switch value is going to be 1 now. So the if statement is going to be false. So we're going to go to this next else if statement. Now we're checking to see if the value of switch equals 1, which it does. So we're going to perform these actions. We have another LSL color function. This time it's going to set the cube to the color green on all sides. And then it's going to set the switch value back to 0. Now I added an else statement here. The else statement will set the color to blue if switch is not zero or one. I added it only as an example though, because switch will always be either zero or one. So the functions under this else statement will never run. So in reality, this is what we're left with. If switch is zero, we set the cube red, set the switch to one. If switch is one, we set the cube to green and set switch back to zero. In reality though, we don't even really need the else if statement because if it's not one, it needs to be zero. And if it's not zero, it needs to be one. So we can use an else statement instead of the else if. So now we're saying if the switch is zero, set the cube to red and set switch to one. Otherwise, which would be the switch is one, set the cube to green and set switch back to zero. Let's modify the script a little more now. I added some additional variables here at the top. I created an integer variable named sides and assigned it the value of all sides. All sides is an example of an LSL constant. Its value never changes. Next, I added two vector variables, one for the color red, one for the color green. Within the touch event, I added set status functions as well. Let's go through the conditional now. The first time the cube is touched after the set is rescript, switch is zero. So if switch equals zero, do these three things. First, we're going to set the color. 
and we're going to use the on color vector we created in the global section. And for which side to color, we're going to use the sides variable, which again is just all sides, so all sides of the cube are going to be set to the on color. Below that is the set status function. The set status function requires some parameters followed by a true or false statement. In this case, we're setting the phantom status to true, which will make the prim phantom, which means you'll be able to walk through it. And then we're going to set the switch value to 1. When we touch the box the second time, the switch value will be 1. So we'll skip the whole first set of functions and go to these set functions. First, we set the color to the off color on all sides. This time we set the phantom status to false, so you'll no longer be able to walk through the cube. And we set the switch back to zero. This would work kind of like a portal. When you click it, it would be red and you could walk through it. When you click it again, it would be green and locked. Let's add two more functions to spice it up even a little bit more. We're going to use the LL set prim parameters function in this case. This function requires a list of parameters in between the parentheses. So when switch is zero, we're first going to set the color to the on color on all sides. We're then going to set the phantom status to true. And then we're going to set the glow for the prim, again on all sides, to 1.0, which is full glow. When switch is zero, if we touch it, we first set the color to the off color. We set the phantom status to false. And we turn the glow back off. We set that value to 0.0, .0 again on all sides. Let's see if we can slim this code down even a little bit more with a function. Now in the global variables function, I replace the two vectors with a list that has the two vectors. You see the list has the open brace, followed by the vectors, which are separated by commas, and then the close brace. This is the syntax for an LSL list. Below that, I have my do this now function. This function is going to accept an integer value named tval, which is going to use within the functions it performs. So let's go back down to the touch start event. Notice we got rid of all the functions down there. All we're doing now is changing the value of switch. If switch is zero, we set switch to one. Otherwise, we set switch back to zero. After we do the comparative, we call the do this now function, and we send it the value of switch. The do this now function accepts the value of switch and runs these three functions within it. First, it runs that same set color function. And inside that function, there's another LSL function, the LSL list to vectors function. The list to vector function simply requires the name of an existing list and the element number within the list that you want to select. In this case, we're calling the all colors list we created here, and we're going to use whichever value we're sent, which will be either 0 or 1. We finish that off with the sides constant to close out the set color function. So if do this now is sent the value 0, set color is going to go to the list all colors and look for the first value in the list, which is actually value zero. If it's sent one, it's going to go to the same list and now look for the second value, which is actually the value of one. After the color is set, it's going to run the set status function. This function is again going to set the phantom status. It's going to use the value of tval as a true or false, zero being false, one being true. So if tval is zero, then the phantom status will be false. If tval is one, and the phantom status will be true. Lastly, we're calling the set prim parameters function again. Again, we're using the prim glow constant. We're setting the prim glow on all sides with the all sides constant that we set above. The value of this function requires a float, not an integer. So we're converting tval to a float for that. Float inside the parentheses preceding tval converts it to a float. So that value will now be either 0.0, .0 or 1.0. If it's 1.0, the prim will glow fully. If it's 0.0, the prim won't glow at all. Now take a look at this additional modification I made. Now I took everything out of the touch start event. Now when you touch the cube, you go straight to this function and it handles everything. After setting all the parameters, I change the value of switch. The plus equals 1 adds 1 to the value of switch. So if switch is 0, it will now be 1. If switch is 1, it will now be 2. Then I use a conditional checks to see if switch is greater than 1. If switch was 0 and changed to 1, it won't be greater than 1. It'll stay 1. If switch is now 2, that is greater than 1. We will change it back to 0, and we end the function. This is coded slightly differently, but performs the same actions. This is what it would look like in world. The cube starts out green, and you can't walk through it. Then when you touch the cube, it turns red, and it glows, and you are able to walk through it. Then when you touch it again, it can
converts back to green and you can't walk through it again. We'll have some more script examples in the next video. We're also going to talk about security, privacy, and permissions in the next video. You may feel like this is a subject you want to skip. It's a short video though and it'll save you a lot of frustration in the future. If you like this video, be sure to click the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. See you in the next video.